there's a mindset that goes with being an athlete, and it's a little bit mysterious to the rest of us. A man who grew up in Nepal named Prasumba Sherpa used to tell me he's actually the first person I climbed Mount Rainier with and the first person my parents climbed Mount Rainier with. And he always said, if you can win in the mountains, you cannot lose in the valleys. So sometimes when it's 2.30 a.m. and my pager keeps going off and there's three things I need to be doing at the same time, I try to think, you know what, it's okay. I've been up at 2.30 and climbing a mountain and I did that and I can be strong today as well. Laura Matson is an orthopedic surgery resident at a hospital in Portland, Oregon. She works 80 hours a week with one 24-hour break. On that day off, she plays as hard as she works. This morning I got to get up and had a wonderful morning from going to a spin class to lifting weights to yoga to running with my best friends, so it's been a wonderful day. Laura's parents raised her to challenge herself. She went on her first backpacking trip at six weeks old. For her recent 26th birthday, she climbed two mountains and skied down. While she was in medical school, she started running marathons to relieve stress. I did the Portland Marathon without a lot of training and was excited with my time, and that's in October. And then I hope to do the December Marathon, which is down in Sacramento, and I was going to be down at University of California Davis for an away rotation. So I was down there and running a lot. and. Um, my hip felt okay for the training for the marathon, but it was about mile like 13 that I started to all of a sudden feel a pretty sharp pain in my hip. Laura finished the marathon, but she couldn't run for weeks afterwards. She worked out with weights to stay active. During a visit to her parents in Seattle, she went to see Dr. Brian Krabeck at UW Medicine Sports and Spine Physicians. Laura is quite interesting. She's a competitive runner who had done several marathons and unfortunately ran into her trouble with overtraining. And when she came to me, she wound up having a, a hip stress fracture, which can be quite serious. Spent a lot of time talking to Laura about why she runs, what her goals are for running, and her eventual goal of competing in the Boston Marathon. And we didn't just focus on the hip but we focused on nutrition, the reason she was running, the impact running had on her, and outlining a appropriate training program. He really looked at the holistic approach of getting better. So he looked at how much I was training and how many off days and how flexible I was, and he tried to really integrate um, all of that. So he encouraged me to take more off days, to do yoga and do more stretching activities, and um, to really balance training. Laura has been able to return to running, even competing in marathons when her busy schedule allows. She ran the Boston Marathon, something she'd always wanted to do. It's like summiting a mountain. You finish that distance and you feel great. You feel like you've really achieved something and it's also something that you can bond with others about. So it just brings people together. For Laura, as for other athletic patients, there's an important emotional element to regaining fitness. Dr. Krabeck and his colleagues understand this. He really understands that sports are important and that you really want to keep doing them and train hard. So he uh, came up with a plan for, um, with me to keep training hard and but still resting my hip and getting holistically better. Having an injury can really lead to a sense of loss. Uh, what we try to do is, is understand the impact of that from a physical, psychological, emotional standpoint and, and devise a plan that allows them to recover quickly and appropriately. Um, and that's key because a lot of athletes come in or individuals who have lost function can get really depressed about how they're moving on functioning in life. And we, we really want to focus on that to help them and not just treat a specific type of injury. Dr. Krabeck's empathy for his patients comes from his own love of sports. Other specialists at UW Medicine Sports and Spine Physicians are athletes as well. We've competed in a variety of events from marathons, triathlons, cycling, ultramarathons, swimming, you name the sport, we've probably done it. Um, and so we understand the pressures that an athlete might go through um, and their need to return to sport. A lot of our athletes come in and the first thing they say is, I don't want to be pulled from my sport, I don't want to have to stop, I don't want to have to quit. And having been a college athlete, I can definitely relate to that. 
Um, and being a more of a weekend warrior kind of athlete now, I can definitely relate to that. So our goal is not to keep people out of their sport forever, not to tell them they can't participate, but to give them guidelines of how they can participate safely and how they can best get back to their sport. Dr. Marla Kaufman and Dr. Krabach see patients at the University of Washington Medical Center Bone and Joint Center, one of two UW Medicine Sports and Spine Physicians locations. Our focus is to work together to meet, to collaborate and share ideas as well as resources that we have for optimizing care. Um, we'll meet t weekly to d discuss cases, we have various conferences, um, and we have instant access to each other throughout the week. And if one of us is away, somebody else is there to help cover the practice so that our, our individuals have efficient access to care. Dr. Mark Harris is based at the Harborview Medical Center location. Patients at both facilities receive the benefit of the entire team's expertise. We have the whole plethora of treatments available to us with regard to different practitioners from non-operative specialists to surgical specialists to physical therapists and, and the like. So we really can provide the whole spectrum of care. Good. And did you have physical therapy at the hospital as well? We work as a team. The doctor's responsible for the medical diagnosis, ordering like tests like radiology, MRIs and things like that and then they prescribe medications and on our part we do the conservative management in terms of exercise, stretching, we prescribe the different types of stretching maneuvers that they can do, safe exercise protocols, we design exercise programs for them both here that they can do under supervision and at home for home programs. The first line of treatment may involve rest to let tissue heal. Anti-inflammatory medication may be prescribed. Sometimes acupuncture will be helpful. Physical therapy may include heat, cold, or electrical stimulation to decrease inflammation, as well as exercises for rehabilitation. With physical therapy in time, there's a lot of soft tissue injuries that can just heal by itself. The body has a lot of recuperative powers and healing powers, and given the right conditions, a lot of these minor injuries and moderately severe injuries can heal over time if the patient opts not to have surgery. So with exercise and good motivation and compliance to home exercise and protocols, a lot of people can actually avoid surgery if, it, if it's caught before, like before it gets too severe. Bring your knee toward your chest and just meet my resistance. Therapeutic massage may be another element of treatment. Massage therapists use a variety of techniques to address patients' specific needs. There are types that are used for different conditions. If I feel that the joint is stiff, and needs some loosening, uh, relaxation of the tendons, then I will use a technique that will give me that release. Let your arm just bend. When the soft tissue is brought back to its anatomically preferred positioning, and we're looking at a person that is in good symmetry and balance, We've eliminated some of the possibilities that could have been contributing to more pain than the patient actually needed to experience. So we'll get you on the treadmill. Just when you're ready, hit the quick start button. Okay. And then get up to a comfortable speed. Okay. And then I'm just going to hang out and we're going to take a look at your stride. Okay. All right, good. An alteration in training techniques or in how a patient performs tasks at work may address the underlying causes of the problem. I take a very biomechanical approach to looking at things. Um, you know, take for example a runner with knee pain. Um, in a lot of runners it tends to be the hip that's actually the issue. Even though they're not having pain in their hip, they're having pain in the knee. The culprit is the uh, hip and the victim is the knee and that's where the pain is coming from. Then we can work with them with their athletic trainer, with their personal trainer, with their physical therapist to kind of get them into the right rehabilitation program to really rehabilitate the injury optimally. I, I know you made the appointment to talk about the possibility of cortisone injection. I think that's very reasonable. I mean, we've done it you know, last year and it seemed to help you out mm -hmm. very well. I mean, these aren't things that we want to do regularly all the time kind of thing, but right. it'd be something to do periodically, particularly if you know, you're having this you know, yeah. standstill where you're not able to get to that and next level. And the anti-inflammatories didn't work all that well. Yeah. Oh, that's right, you I told mean, me I that. I did for two yeah. weeks, and I don't really like to yeah. continually be taking yeah. that either. Yeah, and you're working in physical therapy now and trying yeah. to get stronger yeah. in here and stuff, yeah. so I think this is a reasonable thing. 
when pain and inflammation are not relieved by conservative treatments, a more invasive steroid injection may be considered. Sometimes injections for pain relief are helpful to help decrease pain while the body's healing and working on the rehabilitation program to correct the biomechanical faults that might be contributing to why they stress their joint in the first place. Injections can serve two roles. They're part diagnostic, which helps us figure out what the source of the pain is, and therapeutic, which means it helps treat the symptoms. They usually have an initial effect from the anesthetic right when we do that injection or within a couple hours. It may take several weeks for the cortisone or medication to work to provide long-lasting therapeutic effect. You'll feel some pressure. This will just be the, the fluid going in, okay? Yeah. A patient may receive multiple injections. However, because they have potential side effects, injections are carefully tracked and not repeated frequently. So some people have a flare of pain for a day or two, so ice it if you need to. All right. Just take a few steps around the room, just want to make sure you got your Balance. land legs on and stuff like that. For some patients, it may be necessary to move towards surgery, the most invasive treatment option. There's definitely a fine balance in deciding when to change treatment paradigms, and that's where I work really with the patient on the team-based approach to really figure out when, when we've exhausted our conservative measures and when it's appropriate to get a little bit further. If surgery is determined to be the best option, Doctors from sports and spine physicians work closely with UW Medicine surgeons for continuity of patient care. We have a group of world-renowned surgeons that are in really close proximity to us. We pass them in the hallway, we email them, we call them on the phone. Um, we really have them accessible, and so if patients do need surgery, we make sure that they get there in a timely fashion. Um, the surgeons have our notes, they have the imaging already, so it really makes the transition easy for the patients. We're advocating for them so they don't have to do it all themselves. I can talk with the surgeon and let the, let the surgeon know what the issues really are with the patient and let them know that maybe they're a little bit afraid of surgery, but surgery might be the best thing because we've really worked on all these other strategies. And then also to um, you know, make sure that the surgeon really knows that the goal of this is to get the patient back functioning, back to the level of their sport that they were in prior to this. It's important in evaluating patients when surgery is appropriate and not appropriate. One of our goals is to be the uh, almost gatekeeper for musculoskeletal type injuries in understanding what can be managed non-operatively versus operatively. The majority of what we see and the majority of what presents to our clinics doesn't need surgery and that's where our expertise comes yeah. in. Does it bother you at all when I push along your joint line here on the inside? No. And how about when I push here on the outside? Every patient's condition is unique in some way, and treatment plans are designed for individual needs. Options are thoroughly discussed because it's essential for patients to take an active role in their treatment and recovery. Our treatment plan is based on our conversations with the patient and what they're interested in proceeding with. So um, we don't dictate what's going on. We counsel our, our patients and work with them to figure out the best optimal plan. If we refer them to physical therapy, they're always told that the biggest part of it is what they do at home. So what the goal of the physical therapy is, is to teach them the exercises that they need to do in order to help manage whatever issue they have. Um, and a lot of times we tell patients they're going to have to incorporate this into their, their daily routine for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, and you know, most patients say that once they start doing it, they feel so much better that they, they really are willing to do it. And they actually really want to do it. I'm just going to watch you walk. So I just want you to walk right down here in the room. Before any treatment can begin, of course, patients need to know when to seek medical attention. Pain that doesn't go away is a good indication. If it lingers more than three or four days, or in case of a spine, uh, there's pain that's radiating down the leg. If it's a knee injury, it starts to get swollen and you can't weight bear, then that's a good time to get evaluated and to have things appropriately looked at to make sure that there's nothing serious going on. I think that you cannot ignore how pain affects somebody's mood, their relationships, their psychological state, um, especially when you're talking about an athlete who can't play their sport, you're talking about an older person who can't get to the grocery store and do their grocery shopping, um, you're talking about a father who can't play ball with his kids. Um, we can't ignore how that also affects their mood and the rest of their life and their relationships. So I think it's really important to address that as well. Ginny Price knows a lot about pain. 
She's a high-level cross-country skier and triathlete who's had some injuries over the years, including knee, shoulder, and elbow problems. These days, she has an ongoing problem with back pain. I have a disc that's degenerating, and uh, it's all a question of, of managing it. And for me, that means managing it and still staying involved in sports as much as I can. Involvement in sports is not just personal for Ginny. It's an integral part of her family's lifestyle. My husband's very involved in sports, and my older son is a cyclist. Uh, I have a second son who has sort of rejected the sports thing, and uh, he is the musician and artist of the family, and claims that he's the, he's the normal member of the family. So Ginny sought a physician who would understand her psyche as well as her anatomy, a fellow athlete. Another thing that's important to me in choosing a physician is to find someone, uh, preferentially, who's an athlete themselves, because I feel like they really understand uh, the love of athleticism, the love of competition, and uh, the sort of the drive to, to keep your body active. And, and also they understand the difference between going out for a casual jog and training and the stresses that that can put on your body. And I think they're more able to help you modify your training. That's certainly true of Dr. Harris, an extreme athlete and Ironman triathlon competitor. He's been treating Ginny for several years, first for an elbow injury and now for her back pain. His goal is to allow her to continue in competitive sports. Back pain is such a prevalent thing in our society and it can be quite disabling for some people, especially high-level athletes. And um, we worked with her very aggressively on a rehabilitation program first, really focusing on her core stabilize and trying to change the biomechanics to decrease the stress so that she can continue to participate. Well, I do physical therapy and I also do a lot of strength and core work, so-called core work, you know, the inner core. Uh, I've started taking yoga which has been really good, kind of a conditioning yoga class that uh, also works on the core. But I do, you know, a couple hours a week of strength and core work and uh, probably three or four yoga classes a week in addition. Ski walking is another of Ginny's strategies. It keeps her in shape with a low level of stress to her body. When I do the ski walking or even running using the ski poles and really using your arms, it really takes a lot of the load off your joints, the lower back and the knees. So uh, I think it, it makes it easier to, to continue running. Okay, check that view again. That's a great spot. The next step in Ginny's treatment plan was to decrease inflammation in her lower back with a cortisone injection. The timing for this procedure was based on an upcoming trip to Japan to accompany her son's high school band. Sitting through a long flight would have been quite painful for Ginny. This is your spine like this, this is the front, this is the back, and the spine's made up of bones. These are the vertebrae, and then these are the discs or the cushions in between the bones and the spine, and then the spinal canal's in the middle, and then the nerves come out and exit out. And what we did with Ginny was she had an issue at the L5-S1 disc level, which is right down here, and she was getting pain that was radiated into her buttocks and sometimes down one or both legs. So and what we did was went in right through the sacral hiatus. There's a, there's a small opening right above the tailbone. And we put the needle in here, and then we shoot the medication up to this level, which again is the cortisone to decrease inflammation in here. And check an AP view now. Because the injection was in Ginny's spinal canal, the procedure was too complicated for an office visit. It involved radiology to guide the needle. Good, there it's going up nicely. All right, so we're just gonna stick the medication and then we're done. All right. All right. As it was injected, the medication diffused upward to bathe the area around her affected vertebrae. While the injection was more invasive than her other treatment had been, Ginny felt that it was an option she was ready to try. I was very hesitant to do it for a long time because it seems pretty extreme and of course you don't want anyone sticking a needle in your spine. But I guess I had gone through all of the other routes and done a lot of anti-inflammatories and really decided it was worth a try. And I really trusted Dr. Harris and his technique. Uh, it was virtually painless and I had no side effects other than immediate relief of pain and probably a month's worth of uh, no pain, even rolling over in bed at night and times when I uh, didn't even realize I had pain. So it's worth it to me. Cortisone injections um, are not a benign procedure. I mean, there's something that we have to um, um, 
you know, consider the implications of and make the right decision if we should use them. And certainly they're not to be used every time a patient comes in with either an acute um, traumatic injury or say just a, uh, a, a chronic nagging injury. They're to be used selectively and, to, and for the right patient and for the right reason specifically. And that's the important part of really understanding your patient and knowing what they're doing. Can you see the L5S1? At some point, Ginny may need surgery on her spine, but she's not ready to make that choice yet. I know eventually one of the options is surgery, and I have actually several friends who have had back surgery. Um, I don't feel like I'm there yet. I know that my disc is degenerating, but it's not completely gone. Uh, and I really appreciate Dr. Harris's philosophy in, in trying to do as much as you can to avoid surgery uh, because that in itself has a lot of, can have complications in long rehab and such. So it's been really good to go through those options and modify my workouts and be able to continue with my sports life uh, as much as I can and, and still avoid surgery. Some patients think I just want to have surgery to get better, get, you know, get me back out there, and that's really, that's really the answer, and that's all they understand, and that's all they think, and you know, that's a reasonable um, assumption if you really don't understand injury and training and that very well. Um, but there's a lot of times where you don't need to go to that extreme, or that extreme is not really appropriate, and there's a lot of other pathways to get back and heal from an injury without having to go the surgical route for certain. <laughs> Allison O'Neill loves soccer. I don't remember life without soccer, so. <laughs> I've been playing soccer since I was four years old, and ever since I moved to Seattle, I've played on three co-rec teams, so it's a big part of my life. Play as much as I can. Two years ago, Allison broke her ankle. She didn't stay away from the game long enough to recover fully, so her hip began to take extra strain during play. She called Dr. Marla Kaufman when the pain became serious. A few months into it, my hip started hurting, and it got to the point where I couldn't walk. So I went in to see Dr. Kaufman, and it was a stress fracture. Luckily, it didn't need surgery. I had to stop playing. I was on three teams at the time and had to stop playing. It was really interfering with the rest of her life, and soccer is such a large part of her life that it affected that as well. So we went through the diagnosis process and did determine that she had a stress fracture. Um, luckily for her, the side of her hip where her stress fracture was did not necessitate surgery. It was um, not in a place where they had to go in and, and operate on it. So she did really well um, with physical therapy, with activity modification. First, Allison had to rest her injury, engaging in only very moderate activity for three months. I couldn't run at all. I couldn't even wear heels, so I couldn't wear heels to work, and I couldn't work out, so I was pretty bummed, because I like to stay fit, so it was, it was pretty hard. While she could barely tolerate such a low level of activity, Allison's rapport with her doctor helped her get through it. I felt like she understood that I was an athlete, and that and I was pretty, completely bummed that this was happening to me, and she knew that I wanted to get back out there, so that was definitely appreciated. Once the pain was gone, Allison began three months of physical therapy. It worked. I'm so glad I don't have pain. I was really worried about it, but I've been playing for about four months solid now. No pain. So, good. Our real goal is to keep people active and to help them improve their quality of life, whatever that means to them. Whether that's an athlete that wants to get back to their sport or somebody who wants to play baseball with their kids, anybody that's active, keeping them into their activities, what we try to do is to help facilitate that and give them our recommendations, our ideas, um, and then help them to achieve them. For more information, to make an appointment, or to refer a patient, call either of our two locations, UW Medicine Sports and Spine Physicians at 206-744-0401 or 206-598-4288, or go to http colon slash slash deps dot washington dot edu slash rehab.